Hey guys, it's Michael here. So this is my quad truck. Some of you guys have seen it. Some of you might be new to the channel. And uh, this machine, I took an old broken down Chinese quad that was destined to the dump and kind of repowered it and repurposed it as a quad truck. Super useful. Big front rack, big box in the back to haul firewood around. Um, anyway, some people complain in the past that it's quite ugly. Yeah, it's not the most beautiful machine, but it's function over fashion. And uh, I kind of like the basic ruggedness of Jeeps and uh, Land Rovers and things like that, squared off body panels. But in this video today, we're going to jazz it up, beautify it a little bit. We're going to cut a, a cool custom grill for it on that new CNC plasma table I just got, Jeep style. And I'm going to make a rugged front bumper for it with some shackles. And we're going to cut some back fenders for it to match the front. So if you guys are interested in the video, stick around and check it out. So here's a quick shot of Fusion 360 with all the dimensions of the grill. One quick tip with uh, Fusion 360 is actually uh, using construction lines and mirroring your work. So I pretty much drew half the grill and I was able to mirror the other half once I got all my dimensions right. And it saves you a lot of time making things look right and uh, dimensioning your work. It's just uh, mirroring part by part. So when I figured this thing out, this is the 5 inch hole for the headlight. And I kind of roughed out with some dimensions my basic shape of the grill and I was able to really fine tune it on one side of it and mirror all these other parts to the other side. So definitely saves you a lot of time with programming. I know you guys probably heard me say this in the last video, but I am so thrilled to finally have a CNC plasma table. It's pretty neat to be able to imagine a part, think it up, draw it, and actually watch it get cut. And that turns out awesome. This is one of the coolest looking parts I've ever built. And once I programmed it, it was so easy to manufacture. I'm just really thrilled actually having this technology in my own shop. So pretty sweet. That's the inside of the grill. Of course, it doesn't really need a grill on here, but kind of want to give it that rugged old Jeep look. The reason I'm doing this in two parts is I'm still working with the Mach uh, 3 free version and it was too much code. I mean, you're only limited to 500 lines of code. So I had to program it in a way where I cut out the inside portion, don't move the sheet, import another section of code and cut out the outside version. Um, you are pretty limited with the 500 lines. You can definitely get the table going and cut little brackets and simple things. But for something like this with the whole, all the complex in and out starts and stuff like that, you're pretty limited. So I'm gonna upgrade um, to get the unlimited version of Mach 3 pretty soon. All right, let's get the outside cut. So like I mentioned earlier, I had to break up the grill into two parts because I was limited to 500 lines of code with this free program. And uh, so I just cut out the inside, now I'm going to grab the file and bring it into uh, Mach 3 and I got the outside of the grill ready to go. And there's the part on the screen, that's going to be the cut path. Reset, hit go, and it starts cutting out the grill. Pretty awesome. So I'm running the new Titanium 45 uh, Plasma Torch. I've been really happy with it so far. It cuts these parts out great. If you guys are interested in uh, checking out a review of that uh, Plasma Torch, I'll put a little link in the upper right hand corner of the video. But of course this isn't the only Plasma Torch that I'll run with this table. There's actually quite a few different torches I'll run with this thing. Mainly you just don't want a high frequency start. You want to use a pilot arc start. And uh, if you go to the link below the Langmuir website for the CNC tables, they actually have a large list of um, plasma torches that work and don't work with their tables. So definitely if you're interested in getting one of these down the road, I would look that up first and make sure your uh, plasma torch is compatible with it. Now that's pretty cool. That is awesome. We'll see how it fits now. There you go. I like it. It gives it uh, that classic old Jeep utility look. And it was kind of bare in the front end before, so it kind of cleans it up a little bit, finishes it off. And I got another plate of uh, aluminum that's going to get welded on down here just to kind of finish it off and work like a little front skid plate as well. All right, done with the CNC for a little while. Now we're getting back to some hand tools, drilling some stuff, mounting this thing on here, uh, doing some fabrication and some welding, and uh, seeing this thing come together here. So here's something basic, but I just figured this out the other day in uh, Mach 3 and it's pretty helpful and might help you guys out. 
Uh, say you want to make a straight cut across your metal and get rid of a scrap of metal. All you have to do is turn down your jog speed down to like say 50 inches per minute and then you manually start the torch and use your arrow keys to travel it across the work. Once you get to the other side, turn off your torch and you got your piece cut and get that scrap out of the way. Just a nice little simple tip. So if you guys are familiar with my quad truck, in one of my videos in the past, I actually made some aluminum fenders from scratch. I had to cut everything on my table saw. It took forever cutting out the parts and then welding them together. But anyways, it was so simple to program on this thing now. I was able to program some rear fenders to kind of match. And it took me no time at all to cut them. And I don't have a metal brake yet, so I cut those stitch lines in here for making bending a lot easier. So that's what I'm doing right now is cutting out some parts and we're going to be building some rear fenders next. All right, so I really need to build a brake for my hydraulic press, but I don't have one right now, so I got some heavy duty gauge angle iron in the vise, and I got a welding clamp on here, and this is part of the rear fender that has some stitching, so I'm gonna give this a bend and see how it goes. This should be pretty good. So here's some of that stitching I did with the plasma torch. So I just left these little sections to bend, and here's a bent section. And I'll just come back through here with the TIG welder and fill these in with the uh, TIG weld. Turned out pretty good. So this next little tool here is really basic. It's a carpentry tool. And it's just an angle finder. You can kind of match bends and things like that. You can get them this variety and you can also get digital ones. that will tell you the exact angle you got. But yeah, I was just kind of setting up the right uh, bend on here. Of course, you don't have the right tool. You kind of come up with the alternative. And that's where I got my simple metal break here. Got the bend how I want it. Now I got my C-clamps and I got more of those angle finders on the back here to kind of support my workpiece. So uh, when I get ready to start tack welding aluminum, you need both hands to tack weld. You need one for the rod and the other hand to hold the torch. You can't really support your piece like you can with MIG, so it's kind of why I work it out that way. And I found that's a simple solution to get your correct angle without um, having three hands. All right, you guys, I said it before, I'm going to say it again. I really like my little Pro TIG 200 aluminum welder here. Bought this about a year ago from Harbor Freight before they discontinued them. I paid about a thousand bucks for it. I've been really happy with it. It's really kind of taught me how to weld aluminum. But uh, I would recommend keeping an eye out parking lot sales. People have been mentioning about picking these things up for 250 to 350 bucks, which is an awesome deal. I especially would keep an eye out if you're looking for one soon because as they come out with the Pro TIG 205, I think the people are going to be upgrading to that and maybe trading these ones in. So there might be a flood of them at parking lot sales. And I'm sure there's better aluminum welders out there, but at 250 to 350 bucks, that's really hard to beat. So a few months before I got my aluminum welder, I was trying to teach myself how to TIG weld steel on the titanium 200 welder. And I found it was definitely a steep learning curve, but one thing that made a drastic difference for me were these little stubby gas lens kits, the Pyrex cups here. And that really made a difference for me. Not only did you get better gas coverage, you also can actually see your work a lot better, better light coverage with that Pyrex cup. They're about 20 bucks a kit on Amazon, so I'll put a link below in the description if you guys are interested in that. I'm just saying it helped me out drastically for uh, making something that's difficult to learn how to TIG weld a lot easier when you can actually have the right tools to do it. So I really like the way that front Jeep style grill looks on the front of the quad truck, but I felt it was still missing something and I kind of want to get away from a quad and make it look like a little bit more like a little off-road truck. So I decided to mock up some stuff. I drew it up in Fusion 360 the other evening. It's going to be a little off-road bumper, kind of a little aggressive style. And it's going to be all out of aluminum because I have a bunch of that around. And uh, I got all the parts cut and this is actually going to be a cap or a skin that's going to go around a little bit of inch and a half by inch and a half uh, square tubing. So I'm gonna weld this together and bring you guys back when we're getting ready to fit the bumper to the front of the quad truck. If you guys seen some of my last few videos I've been posting, I've been actually using this little CNC table quite a bit for building stuff. I've been having a lot of fun with it. 
But anyways, to be able to get in the CNC market for $1,500 for a plasma table is pretty awesome. So if you guys are interested in the Crossfire, go click that little link in the description below and go check out their website. And also don't forget, I have a little promo code. It's Mike Festiva in all capitals. It's in the description below. Um, use that. It'll save you $100 uh, when you go to check out. And it gives me a little bit of a kickback and helps me out too. So I can kind of afford to keep making these videos for you guys. So yeah, check it out. Like when I was thinking about getting the table, I had to ponder it for a few weeks, look over over it, read forums, check out videos, and read their website. Lots of good tutorial videos on their website, and uh, just see what you think about them. I've been super happy with mine. At this point in the video, you're probably wondering what I'm building here. These are actually bumper mounts. I welded those nuts on the inside there, and I'm capturing them with these pieces of metal. And this is actually going to be a section I'm going to weld onto the front of the quad truck around some of the uh, rounded tubing. And this is going to be so I can bolt on and take off the bumper easily, and it has a really solid secure mount to the frame. So if you watch it a little bit later, you'll see those things fit up on the frame like a glove. They fit perfect. So I ended up picking up some shackles for the front bumper here and made these uh, on the CNC table. This is 8th inch steel and uh, quarter inch, welded them together. And these are actually what's going to retain the aluminum bumper to the metal insert. I get them out like this with the shackle. So let's mount this thing up and see how it looks on the front of the quad. you guys hope you enjoyed the video I had a lot of fun building this part and I have to say this is a grill here is probably one of the coolest parts I've ever made and one of the easiest to manufacture once I drew it up on fusion 360 you hit cut and cut it out and it turned out pretty damn cool of course you could build something like this by hand with some hole saws and some stuff but it'd be really hard to get it to turn out equal and um, mirrored perfectly on both sides so anyways that was fun more cosmetic stuff in this video but the little jeep front end the bumper is pretty cool i got a lot of extra practice welding uh, aluminum on this bumper it all turned out pretty well and uh, i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please hit like and subscribe and i'm going to let you guys know about an up and coming project i'm going to start working on it might be one of the biggest projects i've ever made this is a pretty good size one converting this little quad the sawmill i built was a pretty good size project but um I want to make an articulating dump truck, a mini dump truck, about the size of my tractor. Probably about 1,500 pound little dump truck. And uh, this is something I actually wanted to start on three years ago, but after I had my son, I realized I didn't have enough time to do it. Anyways, I got a drivetrain from a Subaru Legacy, and I'm going to convert all that, and it's going to be articulating. Uh, this thing was built off a quad chassis. It's always going to be on a quad chassis. Four to 500 pounds you can haul with it. This thing I want to actually be able to haul dirt around my property, do terracing, put shovel loads of dump, dump loads for my tractor in it, and haul it around. So anyways, I'm uh, hoping to get started on that in January of 2020, so it's coming up pretty soon. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.